So who's here seen the movie Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle? One, two, three. So okay, I'm gonna portray a scene from that movie for you, that specific scene. Mowgli and Bagheera are out there in the jungle, wandering around, and it's time for, for food, hunting. Bagheera spots a prey, a gazelle, then Bagheera and Mowgli sneaking in the grass, as you see in that, in that picture, approaching that prey, the uh, gazelle, and Bagheera like whispering to Mowgli like, shh. Not like this, shh, but shh. Bagheera can't do that, right? <laughs> and says, hunting is secret, little brother. It's all right, but we never do it for a sport. Then Bagheera strikes, kills, and kills the prey. This is gonna be our theme for, for the talk today and we will come back to it later again. So, a little bit about myself. My name is Ashraf Muhammad Abdul Halim. I'm an incident responder with FireEye, Mandian team, Middle East Africa. In the last five years, I've been doing incident response, threat hunting, um, tactical threat intelligence, and a little bit of reverse engineering whenever time's allowed. That guy on, on the left is Uncle Tango. He is a Sudanese cartoonish a character. You know, we used to see it a lot in, in our books in the school, you know, early in the days. So you guys, fellow Americans, got Uncle Sam, we got Uncle Tango. So, <laughs> so that's how I look like on the, on the internet. So whenever you see that picture, you know, just connect. So let's, let's start. Yeah, the agenda for this talk is gonna be, you know, kind of straightforward. I'm gonna, you know, describe the problem that I wanna talk about. Then, you know, a few case studies that would help, you know, grasp the problem and then, you know, jump, jump to the solution. But before jumping to the solution, I'm gonna, you know, discuss with you, you know, a few principles that would help us, you know, understand the solution that I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you. And then we will conclude. So yeah, the problem. As we saw in that scene from the movie, you know, hunting in the jungle for predators like Bagheera comprises two things. The act of searching for prey and the act of killing the prey. And those two things together in the jungle is, is what's called hunting. Predators are, are adapted and specialized to do that, you know, seamlessly and masterfully. You don't feel seams and gap between those two things in the jungle. But in cybersecurity, in our domain, when we say hunting, we mean the act of searching for adversary inside our environment. The act of killing the prey is what we call response, right? So, but still, for us as a defender, as a defenders, we've got to do the two as masterfully and seamlessly as predators does in the jungle. Otherwise, otherwise we won't you know, uh, uh, survive a, a, a ad adversary, adaptive adversary inside, inside you, your environment. So we've got to do the two you know, as seamlessly, uh, as, as masterfully as predators do. Hunting and response are, are interrelated, no doubt, very obviously. And they are considered, you know, uh, considered like a kind of twins, you know, as you can see, you know, threat hunting and answer response summit. That's, that's an example. But still, there are differences between the two missions that set them apart as a fraternal twins. They, they are not identical. Differences like age, for example. Hunting is younger than response. So you have two interrelated missions that are different in maturity. That's something you know we need to we need to reconcile. Also, we have hunt on one side, which is a proactive, iterative process, while response on the other side is reactive, trigger-based process. That's important to mind because at the end we need to to think how we're gonna synchronize those two processes together. Also, you have hunt, which starts from 
the scope, which is the environment that you are hunting in, the data set you are collecting from that environment, and it moves to the lead, the needle in that haystack. Response on the other side it starts from, from that lead and moves to the scope of the intrusion. So yeah, they are kind of you know, interrelated. The symbiosis between the two is obvious, but still we need to mind the difference, you know, scope to lead, the lead to scope. The other difference between the two is response is kind, kind of intra, intra departmental. You can complete a, a hunt trip, you know, in, within the IT security, IT department. While response is an interdepartmental process. You might get people involved from the PR, HR, legal, you know, for sure IT, and even business owners and, and executives. And that would have an impact on pace. You have a hand that you know you can complete quickly, but response might take a little bit, you know, longer time. How are we gonna reconcile and integrate and synchronize those two things together? The final thing is resourcing. And by resourcing, I mean, you know, do you have enough cadre to, to, to run hunt and response completely in-house or you need to outsource some? If you can't run it completely in-house, you know, would you be able to run hunt and response simultaneously or, you know, you need to stop hunt in order to, to, to start response? If you outsource some, how do you integrate you know, the, the external resources or capability with the internal, internal capability? These kind of questions you know, we got to think about and you know, they kind of set the two, two missions you know, a little bit apart from each other. And uh, actually, you know, we don't have twins, we do have triplets because evil response is actually two things, investigation and and remediation. So at the end, we do have hunting, investigation, and remediation. So at the end, what we ended up in is what the military people call hunter-killer team. For those who do not know, hunter-killer team is the team that you know separates the tasks of hunting and killing, as you can see in the, in the picture. You know, a guy with a telescope to spot the target and the other guy is responsible about shooting that target. This is kind of what we do right now in the, in the industry. Even if the two mission is handled by, by the same team, even if they are handled by the same guy, it's still the two are. Uh, 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 the, the differences and the two tasks separated somehow. So, we as an industry have done a great work to improve those two missions. But in my humble opinion, kind of separately. This talk is meant to, to look at the seams and the gaps between those two separated tasks, try to spot them, highlight them, and then provide a solution to integrate and synchronize those two missions together. So you get to your objective, like these guys. So yeah, that's the problem kind of in theory. Let's have a case studies from real world experience, you know, that you know, would, would help you know, grasp the issue that you know, we are about to, to address. The first case study. Hunt mission started, led to a discovery that triggered answer response. So the investigation started, the system you know, investigated the the intrusion defined the scope. The scope kind of big. The attacker had access to the environment for quite a long time, a domain admin level, uh, domain admin level access. So the environment, you know, a badly compromised. The remediation team had to prepare for a costly enterprise-wide countermeasures. Remediation done, few days shortly after the remediation, a second finding came. And this is where problem started to, to emerge. Why the findings came after the remediation, 
because the team had to pose hunt to do investigation and remediation. In other cases, the hunting was running at that time, even you know, in parallel with the investigation and the remediation, but there was no proper synchronization between the remediation team and the hunting team. So the new finding came, the team again investigated the intrusion, and again we need to you know, execute a second remediation action on the environment. But you've got a, a tired team, a business that's sensitive for, 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 for a remediation action again that would disturb business. So people started looking for patchy countermeasure and played a whack-a-mole game with the adversary and, and, it won, and it went like that. It could have been better if we, you know, just, you know, executed one remediation at least in, 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 in let's say, a, a, a six months instead of executing two remediation actions in, in, in a very short amount of period. So if we, if we had a synchronization between the remediation team and the hunting team, hey guys, we've got something in the queue, please you know, give us a few days just to confirm it, investigate it, and then execute remediation, for example, for adversary A and adversary B at once. So this is you know, one of the stories that, you know, again, a real world story from the front lines, you know, something that we experienced and seen you know, happen, happening to, to our clients. The second case, you know, again, hunting started, led to a finding, uh, kicked off a uh, investigation, uh, kicked off answer response, investigation started, scope defined, forwarded to the remediation team, but, and, and, and by the way, you know, I was personally involved in that. Just like few hours before the, the zero clock, the time that we're gonna execute the remediation, we got a call from a top executive that said, you know, guys, you got to, to postpone the remediation for one month. And, you know, the, the, there was a gap between the remediation team got that order and the investigation team because the, the investigation team did not track the adversary in that one month period. And by the time the remediation executed, the adversary had already shifted in the environment and the remediation action that was planned before are no longer valid and attacker survived. Case number three. In this case, you know, it's kind of the feedback, you know, from each phase to the previous uh, phase. So here we do have a remediation executed. People were planning for like a one month, cheers, and celebration and done. But there was no follow-up post-remediation assessments and monitoring to make sure that you know the actions taken in the remediation were, were done successfully and we did and we did not have something missed. So and actually I came to this uh, I, 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 I came to know this specific case during an investigation where the client called us to investigate the very same case, but after two years. And when we started that investigation and trace it back, the origins, we discovered the, this remediation attempt made by the client were, were, were missed because you know, that gap you know, they had in the remediation was not discovered by the investigation team in the post-remediation actions and, and the adversary survived in the, in the environment. Yeah, case number four. During investigation, that's huge. investigation is usually the, the phase where you learn about the threat you're facing and the environment you, you're hunting on. You get to climb the perimeter of pain, identify attacker or adversary TTVs, and you learn a lot about you, your environment. If that knowledge is, is, is not leveraged and you know, taken back to the hunting practice to create new hypotheses, you know, to, to, to re-architect and, you know, I, 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 and bridge the gaps in, in, your, in, your, in your environment, then you, you're, missing, you're missing the pot. You're, you're doing uh, something wrong. Especially if you know that, you know, 64% of our clients get retargeted by the same adversary or a similar adversary. 
then you know whenever you have an engagement with, with a with a, with, an, an, a, with a threat actor, be prepared for the next engagement by exploiting what, whatever you learned, you know, from that in, uh, engagement. Try to, you know, improve your detection, improve your hunting uh, practices. And this is one of the things, you know, I usually try to to tell our clients about, you know, and leave some leads for our uh, our clients, you know, how to hunt for such kind of activity in the future. Because if the attacker decided to, to, to come back, you've got to be prepared for, for that. So yeah, the solution. Before, before I share with you, you know, a solution that will help you, you know, in, uh, will, help, will help you integrate and, and synchronize the you know, hunting, investigation, and, and remediation, I'm going to quickly you know, have a discussion with you about a, a very fundamental principles in, in cybersecurity, which is offense and defense, because it's needed for you, you know, to understand the solution properly that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide. Offense and defense for some or even many is thought of as a complete antithesis, you know. You either do defense or offense. The reality, though, neither, neither offense or nor defense is a homogeneous whole. Offense has some elements of defense, and defense is permeated with some elements of offense. Don't worry, I'll explain a little bit. As I mentioned, you know, each one of them, you know, has some elements of the other. So it's, it's not like, you know, a complete antithesis. And for this presentation, I would like to, you know, to, 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 to highlight for you the type of offensive actions that you take within a defense mission. Someone might say, yeah, you mean penetration testing and red teaming. No. By offense here, I mean a, a real offensive actions that you take against your real adversary, not the action that you take on, on, on your environment in order to, to improve yourself. No, the action that you take against your adversary. So you might say then, ah, you mean hack back? No, nah. big no. I would never recommend for someone, especially in the private commercial sector, to go and, and touch the red space of the adversary. Then you would say, what are you talking about, Ben Ashraf? I would say active defense. And I like the defi definition of active defense from the United States DOD dictionary. Active defense is the employment of limited offensive actions and, count and counterattacks to deny a contested area or position to the enemy. I do not know something that would fall perfectly under this definition like threat hunting and answer response. They are offensive in nature. You, are, you, know, you take action against a real adversary, limited because you take this action within your environment, and those actions are meant to deny contested area or position to the adversary. So think of hunting and response as a, the offensive completely legal because they are within your environment and you know we will be, you will be praised for it. To deny an adversary the, the areas or position that he managed to compromise inside your, your environment. So hunting and response are offensive within a big defense mission. So now let's discuss the solution. Okay, how I'm gonna integrate and synchronize and manage hunt and response as one thing. Simply think of them as one thing. Take a one step back, try to visualize, model, and manage the two as one. You would say, how? Yeah, this is a model that I use personally to Manage hunt or, and to manage hunting and response as one thing, the kill chain, the original kill chain, not, not the cyber kill chain. The kill chain in the military is a model to plan and execute offensive action. 
and specifically targeting, okay? In the industry, we used to use kill chain for defensive purpose, cyber kill chain. We tried to, to, to break the chain of the attacker. But keep in mind, you know, we have to complete our, our chain, which is hunting our response. A uh, quick definition for those, you know, who have not, you know, came to read about, about targeting in the military. Targeting, actually, it's the process of selecting and prioritizing targets and matching appropriate response to them. Again, a good definition for hunting and response. And this definition, actually, from the joint, the joint publication, uh, joint targeting uh, publication from DOD. Okay, then what is target in the context of the model kill chain? Target is an entity, whether person, place, or thing, that's considered for possible engagement to neutralize the function it performs for the adversary. And again, that is, you know, that's kind of describing, you know, straightforward. If, you, if we are trying to apply targets to, to our context in cybersecurity, hunting and response, think of per person as any persona being abused by the adversary inside you, you, your environment. That's something you need to engage and neutralize its function for, for the adversary. Think about any place, which is, could be a system, systems or network. Think about things like utility, malware, tools used by the adversary. These are the type of targets that you need to, to identify and consider for engagement to neutralize the functions it provides for the adversary inside your, your environment. Kill chain, also known as F2T2EA, because it's this. Likely, this is the most colorful slide in the summit, and I will get a, an award for that, you know. <laughs> so, kill chain is find. Fix, track, target, engage, and assess. Shortened in F2, T2, EA. And this model I will use to, to, to visualize and manage hunt and response as one thing. And one good thing about uh, kill chain that we need to consider, and, and again, it's from the joint publication uh, JB3-60, which is joint targeting, the steps in the kill chain listed in order. Yep, to ease the explanation, but several steps are accomplished simultaneously and overlapped, which, would, which will help us, you know, address the seams and gap between hunting and response. So yeah, let's you know take you a little, you know, uh, quickly through those steps and see how hunting and response looks like, you know, under the kill chain model. Find. Find is merely, you know, the, the hunt mission. You start with hypotheses based on your knowledge about the threat or your knowledge about the environment. These are the inputs to this, this step, and it gives you the leads. And in our kill chain jargon, we can say targets. By leads, we mean a, a, a adversary malware in the, in the environment a C2 channel, abused account, abused system. These, you know, these outputs go to the next step, which is fixed. Fixed is basically where the location of the adversary is determined inside the, the environment. You go investigate those leads and try to scope the intrusion. Define, you know, the list of compromised accounts. The access mechanism, the, persis the persistence mechanism the adversary used, the list of tools, utilities, and malware used by the, by the adversary, and you try, and, and you strive to define the scope properly. And the, 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 the output of fixed step goes, to, go, goes in two directions. You know, you send the, the, the scope to the next step, and also, you, you know, as we mentioned, during, during the fix, we do investigation, we learn, about, we learn a lot about the, the TTBs of the adversary, and that goes back to the find step. 
because it could help you, you know, you know, create a, a, a new hunting, you know, uh, cycles based on the knowledge that, you know, you obtain from the, from the fixed step. And the scope, as I mentioned, will be forwarded to, to the track. And in the track step, actually, you know, we're going to monitor the activity and movements of the adversary. We keep an eye on whatever the adversary is doing inside your environment. And track step is one of the very critical steps when you are doing, you know, hunting and response calls. Usually the time when you do investigation is not the time that, you know, you take action on the, on the system or, or, or the network. There is a gap. And track would help, you know, keep an eye on the adversary move it, uh, movements in th inside the network between investigation and the time you take remediation. Because investigation is costly. It, it's a time incentive and resources intensive. And you, want, and, you don't want, and you don't want to do it, you know, again on a system that you have already done investigation on. So what you would do is investigate a system and then track the adversary movement from that point until you execute remediation. So, and then the inputs of find and fix goes to track. Track is basically where you plan for the remediation. You, you know, you, 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 get, you, you got, the, you got the, 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 the scope, now you need to know how you're gonna, you know, engage those, those, those targets. For example, how I'm gonna, you know, reset accounts. Do I have a capability for, to reset the, the accounts in the environment? How I'm gonna rebuild the system that are compromised? If I cannot rebuild a, a system because it's a mission critical, what, what type of compensating action I can take on that system? Cleaning, for example. So you plan for the activity, you know, what I'm gonna do, in which, you know, order. Uh, when I'm gonna start the remediation, you know, because, you know, you need to learn about the, the attacker, you know, operational time, so you, are you should, you know, try to avoid that time and take the remediation action in a time that uh, the adversary is not usually, you know, active on your network. Such, a, such kind of discussions between the team, the, 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 the investigation, and the team that are gonna take action on, on, on the environment, you know, they sit together, discuss what they wanna do, and put a plan. Next is engage. And this is the step where act you actually engage the adversary execute the stuff that you, you have planned in the previous step, which is, uh, in the previous step, which is target. So here you execute your actions, verify that the actions were, were completed successfully, they are effective, and then you move to the next step, which is assess. Assess what you have done, and this is usually done by the investigation team, like, you know, looking in the environment, if, you know, they do, do we have leftover? Do we have a system that was not cleaned or, or rebuilt? Do we have an IP address that was used by the attacker still, you know, could access the environment or not? And the assessment outputs, you know, goes back to the previous step. If, for example, we've got a gap that was not addressed during the remediation, you know, you, set that, you send that observation back to the remediation teams, to the remediation team, so they can take an action. And sometimes during assessment, you might go back to fix, track. So, and, and as we mentioned, those steps are uh, overlapped and executed simultaneously. So yeah, so that's how, you know, using kill chain, you know, you actually don't think in, in a way like, you know, hunting, investigation, remediation, more than, you know, it's a one, you know, level up where you where you see all the stuff, you know, together as, as one thing, and it's flexible because you kick off steps together, you keep, you know, go, go back and forth between the steps, so you would be able to integrate and, and synchronize the, the hunt, investigation, and remediation using the, this model. So just a quick recap, you know, don't get confused by the symbiosis between hunt and response. Still, there are gaps between the practices that might lead to failure, and we need to address those gaps by integrating and synchronizing hunt and response. Uh, also, we mentioned that you know, 
hunting and response can be thought of as a offensive actions taken within your environment to deny an adversary a contested area or position. So think of them as offensive action that you can take within a, a defense mission. And if you agree with that way of looking at hunt and response, then you could use kill chain to execute your attacks inside your network against your adversary. Yeah, that's, that's all I have. And open for your questions if you, if you have any. Thank you.